Hi, in this video we're going to uh, talk about the binomial distribution and as I mentioned before a special case of the binomial distribution is what's called the Bernoulli distribution. I'd like to illustrate the binomial distribution with an example so let's uh, let's get into that. Let's say that you have a four question multiple choice exam uh, has each question has five different answer choices. Uh, let's Fill in the probability table for the random variable cap n that's representing the number of questions answered correctly for a person who randomly guesses uh, at each question. So we have little slots to represent each question. Uh, there are four slots, and we're going to refer to these as, as uh, trials. And so in this case, because the person is, is just randomly guessing on each question, uh, whether or not the person gets uh, the second question correct is independent of whether the fir person got the, the first question correct. So these are four independent trials. We're talking about independent trials here. Uh, that's the terminology that we're going to use in, in the context of binomial distributions. Four independent trials. And uh, what would it mean, for instance, for cap n to be equal to 2? So an example of what cap n to be equal to would be, uh, let's say the person got the first and last questions right and missed the middle two. That would be uh, in a situation where cap n would equal two. And of course, there's other situations. The person might have got the second and third one correct, but not the first and, and fourth one. And, and that, so there's all sorts of different ways that uh, cap n could be equal to two. Now, in the context of binomial distributions, uh, this is an example of a binomial distribution, but in the context, we don't talk about uh, correct or incorrect. We talk about successes and failures. And so uh, what we would say is that there are four independent trials here with each trial ending in either a success or a failure. So that's what a binomial distribution is. It's, it's a random variable representing the number of successes. Well, in this case, the random variable cap n is representing the number of successes in four independent trials where each trial ends in either a success or a failure. Later on, uh, I hesitated just now because later on we're going to change the four to another parameter. But anyway, there, in this particular question, we're asked to... Um, uh, uh, fill in the probability uh, table for this. So let's look at the probability table. The number of uh, the support of cap n, the, the, the possible values that cap n could be, it's the number of questions correct in this four question exam. So the possible values of cap n would be 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. And um, the, with probabilities, this is the notation for the probability. So let's focus on uh, the cap p sub zero value first. That's kind of the e one of the easier ones to focus on. Cap p sub zero is the probability that cap n is zero. So what does it mean that cap n is zero? It means that each trial ended in a failure. Uh, so failure, 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 failure. Uh, let's introduce some notation here. This is standard notation that uh, you know is used throughout the the um, not only this exam but future exams too. We're going to let Q be the probability of a failure. Okay, so I've got I've got uh, four failures. That means uh, each time each time I see a failure. <laughs> Uh, there's a probability of Q that I saw that failure. So by a fundamental counting principle argument, the P sub zero value, the probability that cap N equals zero is the probability that there were four failures. So I'm gonna have four factors of Q. So the P sub Z value, P sub zero value would be a Q to the uh, fourth power. Now in this particular example, what is the probability of failure? The failure would mean that the person got the, 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 the question incorrect. And uh, there were five answer choices, one correct answer choices, four incorrect. So four-fifths would be the probability of a failure in this case, or 0.8. So in this particular example, P sub zero would be 0.8 to the fourth power. And uh, as a decimal, that's a, a 0.4096. Um, okay, uh, so now let's move on to another value in the distribution table. And the next easiest value to calculate would be uh, when cap n equals 4. So let's look at, at what does that mean that cap n equals 4. It means that you had four successes. So you had success, 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 success. Uh, let me again introduce some notation. Q is the probability of a failure in this context. P is going to be the probability of a success. So I've got uh, four successes. Each time I see a success, it comes with a probability of a P. And so I've got four factors of P in the calculation for P sub four. 
P sub 4 will be P to the fourth power. And of course, Q was 0.8. P is going to be 0.2. One out of five uh, choices is correct. So P is going to be uh, 0.2. So the P sub 4 value in this example would be a 0.2 to the fourth power. And uh, as a decimal, that would be a 0.0016. Uh, I want to make an observation here that every trial ends in either a success or a failure. So you're always going to get that the P plus the Q is 1. They're, they're probabilities of complementary events. And so they add up to 1. P plus Q will uh, will always be equal to 1. Okay, so now let's focus on uh, maybe the P sub 1 value. So when n is 1, what does that mean that, that cap n is 1? It means I saw one success, and since I saw one success, I must have seen three failures. There were four total trials. So what are the ways that I could see the one success? I could see it as the first trial, or the second trial, or the third trial, or the fourth trial. So there were four different, um, uh, four different outcomes where I could have had one success. So each time I have though one success and three failures and when I see the success it comes with the probability of P the failures come with probability of a Q so every time I see one success and three failures I see one factor of P and three factors of Q and I saw four, there were four different ways, four different outcomes where I had that one success and three failures. So the P sub one value would be four times P to the first factor, one factor of P, and then Q to the third power, three factors of Q. Uh, as an observation here, I wanna point out that the four is actually the same as a four choose one. Uh, this is, I'm using the, the combination notation uh, uh, instead of a four C one, I'm using a four you know, over one that I just read as a four choose one. I mean, and let me remind you that a four choose one is a four factorial divided by one factorial times three factorial and, and that outcome is a four. So instead of the four, I'm gonna write a four choose one there because that's technically how that four was, was determined. And uh, I can show you that uh, again, let's, we'll, we'll do that by, by looking at the next value. Uh, the P sub 2 value in just a second. But I'm plugging in now the, the Q value of 0.8 and the P value of 0.2 to get a numeric value for P1. And P1 would just be then a 4 choose 1 times 0.2 times 0.8 cubed. And that, that actually also ends up being a 0 0.4096, the same as a P sub 0 value. So that just was a coincidence based on the numbers that we were using in this example. Okay, so now let's move on. What about when N is 2? So let's, let's, what does that mean? When n is 2, it means I saw two successes. And of course, I saw two failures since there were four total trials. So how could I see the two successes? Maybe the two successes came in the first two trials, maybe the first and third, the first and the fourth, or the second and the third, or the second and the fourth, or the third and the fourth. If you notice, you back up the video if you need to, but there were six different outcomes there that had uh, two successes and two failures. Each time I see a success, it comes with a probability of P. Each time I see a failure, it comes with a probability of Q. So I'm going to have two factors of P, two factors of Q, and I have six different outcomes that gave me two successes and two failures. So P sub 2 would be a 6 times P squared times Q squared. Again, where did the 6 actually come from? It, it really came from there being four uh, out of the four trials, I'm selecting two out of the four trials to put in the successes. And so the six actually came from a four choose two. Four choose two is, is six. When I plug in the numeric values for P and Q uh, and, and do the calculation, I get a point, what does I get? A point one five, um, I'm sorry, um, what is that? <laughs> a point one five eight six. I can't see what that number is, but uh, all right, whatever. So, uh, uh, all right, so now let's look at, uh, uh, my eyesight is terrible. Let's look at P equal, uh, or N equals three. When I, when I, uh, what does it mean that N equals three? It means that I have uh, three successes and one, uh, uh, one failure. Every time I see a success, it comes with a probability of P. So I'm, I'm gonna have three factors of P, one factor of Q. I'm gonna leave it to you to show that uh, there are four different ways for that, uh, uh, four different outcomes, uh, different outcomes where you could have three successes and one failure in the, in the four trials, uh, just like before. The four, uh, that's the coefficient there, is really a four choose three. And so uh, when I plug in the numeric values for P and Q, I get, uh, what, uh, I get 0 0.02, uh, 
five, six, whatever that number is there. Uh, now I want to focus on the, uh, the coefficients here, the, the, the four choose one, four choose two, and four choose three. <clears throat> Notice how that pattern, it's really a nice pattern. And, and uh, the question is, can you extend that pattern uh, to the uh, uh, cap n equals zero and the cap n equal four case? And the, the, the actual uh, the, the observation is that yes, you can because a four choose zero is a one and a four choose four is a one. So you can insert a one as coefficients in the piece of zero calculation and the piece of four calculation and it replace that one with a four choose zero and a four choose four. The other final observation that I want to make is that uh, if you add up all those piece of p values, p0, p1, p2, p3, and p4, you better get one because if not, it's not a probability table. But in this case, you will. And I'll leave it to you to, to show that you can, uh, when you add those up, you get a one. Okay, so finally, let's, uh, or, or let's move on and, and let's kind of generalize this. So what is a binomial distribution? Uh, so the description of a binomial distribution is a random variable representing the number of successes in M independent trials where each trial ends in either a success or a failure. Remind you, let me remind you that P is going to be the probability of a success and Q is going to be the probability of a, of a failure. But the Q value, once I know the P value, the Q value would just be 1 minus P and vice versa. They're probabilities of complementary events. So we would write this as a cap N uh, and then this tilde as N. Cap N follows a binomial distribution. I would say cap N follows a binomial distribution with parameters M and P. M being the number of trials, independent trials, and P being the probability of a success in any one of those trials. Okay, what is the support of this random variable? The possible values then, if you look at the number of successes in M trials, you could have zero successes or one success or two success all the way up to M successes. So uh, there's a finite number of values in the support of cap N. Uh, it's actually equal to M plus one is the number of values in the support of, of cap N. Uh, but again, the support starts with a zero. You could have a zero, value, uh, a zero for cap N. And then what is the probability? What is the, uh, how do you calculate the probabilities in the probability table? So in other words, what are the piece of K values? Uh, what's the probability that cap N is equal to K? What does this mean? It's what's the probability that you have exactly K successes in those M trials? And uh, as we just illustrated before, that formula for that would be an M choose K times a P to the K times a Q to the M minus K. The P to the K, uh, you're, you're looking at the probability, the event here is that you have uh, K successes, and every time you see a success, you have a probability of P. So you're going to have K factors of P, and then likewise, you'd have M minus K factors of Q. And then M choose K is going to be the number of ways that you can place uh, K successes in M trials there. So that's the M choose K, P to the K times Q to the M minus K. I'm just going to give you the punchline on the expected value and the variance uh, calculations. The expected value is just the product of the parameters M times P. There's actually, it's kind of intuitive if you think about it. You have M trials and the probability of uh, success on any one trial is P. So if you multiply them together, that should give you how many trials you think should end in a success. So that's the expectation of cap N. And then the variance of cap N is just going to be, uh, the, the punchline here is it's the M times P times Q is going to be the variance of, 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 of uh, uh, the binomial distribution with parameters M times P. M times P times Q would be the variance. Finally, uh, I mentioned uh, that the Bernoulli distribution is a special case of this, and it's the special case when M is one, when you only have one trial. If you only have one trial, that trial ends in either a failure or a success. So uh, the probability table, when you only have one trial, uh, cap N is counting the number of successes, so you can have either zero successes or one success in that one trial. Zero successes comes with a probability of Q, one success comes with a probability of P. And then when I calculate the expected value, uh, the expected value is just a P. If you look at the expected value in the, of the binomial distribution, it's M times P, but now M is one if I'm talking about a Bernoulli distribution, so the expected value is just P. Or you could just look at the table and take the sum product in the table, and it's pretty easy to see that the expected value is, is P. And then the variance, if I use the formula for the binomial distribution with an M value of one, I get the variance is just a P times Q. But if you were to substitute in a one minus 
P for the Q value there at the very end. If you would substitute in a 1 minus P and distribute, you'll see that the variance is a P minus a P squared. And written this way, uh, that, that variance as that difference there, a P minus P squared, is nothing more than the second moment uh, minus the square of the first moment. So it's pretty easy. I'll, I'll, let, you, I'll let you think about that. Okay, so that does it for the uh, binomial distributions, often tested ex uh, uh, on, on exam P. So you do need to know uh, these facts uh, inside and out. You should know these facts uh, w when you're getting ready to take the P exam. All right, I'll see you in the next video.